Are you considering homeschooling and you just don't know what all you need to actually have to homeschool? This video is for you. have been homeschooling now for six years, and I am not the type of person who actually uses a whole lot of resources. Um, there's a lot that you will see online as you begin to research, you know, what do I actually need for homeschooling my children? And there's a lot of different preferences. But as someone who does not like having a ton of knickknacks around, I don't use a ton of manipulatives. Um, there are a lot of beautiful resources out there, um, like wooden resources that you may use for your younger children, like sand trays and like number boards and that type of thing. I personally just have not found that I use them while they're beautiful and they're great to have. It's not something that I have felt I've needed for my homeschool. I have actually purchased some of them in the past and just I, I find I don't use them. That's not to say I do know that there are a ton of homeschoolers who use those and find a lot of value in those resources. And I know that they are lovingly crafted by some amazing people. So if that's something that is something that you might enjoy, definitely go ahead and still look into those. But today I'm going to talk to you about the things that I actually use in my homeschool. Some things that are maybe off the wall, something that I use either daily or at least weekly. And so I want to share with you what it is that we actually use in our homeschool. So the first thing I want to talk to you about are menu covers. You may have seen these and thought, do they actually use those? I do. So for our morning time, we use these every single day. I put things like our hymn for the week. I put uh, recitation pieces, our Bible memory, that type of thing. That way the kids can open it up. And we, we do morning time during breakfast too. So it also keeps the papers from getting food on them, that type of thing. These are probably my number one resource that I would recommend for a homeschooler, especially if you're doing something during like times when you're eating something. Um, this is something that we use every single day and we just put everything into it that we go over for that term or that week. And it's just something easy to grab, something that we, um, you know, can utilize. So that is an inexpensive resource that I think um, would be very valuable to your homeschool. Another thing that I would recommend are mini dry erase boards. I mean, you can get a pack of these for pretty cheap. I'll try to find something and link it into um, the notes at the bottom. But I mean, as you can see, I literally wrote down the things that I'm going to go over today with you on this board. You don't have to have um, those big dry erase boards or the big chalk boards that you see um, a lot of homeschoolers use. Now, I do have one and I, and I have utilized it a lot, but I don't think that that is something that is absolutely necessary. Having a small board like this, though, is wonderful to have because it is something that, you know, you're doing math with a child and you're needing to go over how to do something. And it just makes it a little bigger for them to see. They're able to rework a problem. There's a lot of times, you know, with my son, if he got something uh, incorrect in math, I go over it with him on here. Sometimes um, I just need my daughter to practice her spelling words. And so rather than wasting a piece of paper and having her write on that, we just pull out our dry erase board and use that over and over. So giving them something different to write with too just makes it more fun. So these, like I said, I mean, they're like a couple bucks. These, I usually buy two or three of them for our school year just because the kids enjoy using them. So that is another resource that I think would be a benefit to your homeschool. Now let's talk storage. So storage is one of those things you'll find that you'll end up with a lot of books, a lot of um, resources that you need to organize, especially if you're homeschooling for several years and you know you're going to be looping back to certain things with children down the road. You don't want to give away resources that you have if you know that you're going to be using them again. So storage is a huge thing. Um, I love, and this is going to be number three on my list, these are in no particular order, by the way, uh, a rolly cart. So <laughs> it's funny because I saw a lot of homeschoolers talking about their rolly carts, and I was like, oh, this, 
Like, I don't need one of these. We have closets. You know, I can just store stuff in there. But let me tell you, our rolly cart, I now have three of them in different places in the house because I find that as we homeschool, we go to different rooms. And so what I end up doing is all of the resources that we're using for a particular term, every book that we have, I will put on that rolly cart. So for our morning time, I have everything for that term in our kitchen, in our dining room, and it stays right there. And everything that I need, including these menus, sit on that rolly cart along with um, any biographies that we're reading, any art prints that I need, that type of thing. All of that is on that cart. I also have one down in our basement where we do the bulk of our, um, just like our core subjects, all of our math, language arts, history, all of that sits on there along with um, any art supplies that we may be needing for that term or just some extra reads that go along with whatever it is we're studying. I put all of that on a rolly cart and then you can wheel it around as needed or it just becomes a designated space that is available and your kids know, oh, hey, I need to go grab this book. It's probably on the rolly cart because that's where mom puts all of the things that we're using for that term. So a rolly cart is another thing that I would highly suggest. Now, talking more about storage, um, you are going to find that sometimes you have like some loose, loose pieces and parts these bins are fantastic. So I got these at Michael's. We have a couple of them and they have been wonderful. So I tell my daughter, go and grab your language arts. She can open it up and inside is a tray that lifts out. Um, she also keeps some of her math manipulatives in there, which is why there's a bunch of pennies. Like I have been using this now for four years. So this this particular one for four years. So the bin lifts out. I have all of her little mini readers in here. Um, she stores all of her language arts, all the little knickknacks and stuff in there. As you can see, it's very used and I didn't take the time to really clean it before showing it to you because I wanted you to show or wanted to show you what we actually use. You know, the same was with um, this dry erase board. I mean, clearly it has seen better days, right? But because these are so inexpensive, I, I don't really care that sometimes it doesn't always come off, um, but I wanted to show you how it actually, how much we actually use these. So as far as storage goes, the rolly carts I find very invaluable. So if you need something that you can, or you have somebody that you can invest into something, the rolly carts I, I think are worth it. I even got some of the bigger ones. You can get some small ones or you can get the slightly larger ones that I believe are about two feet. The two foot ones are what we use and they come with three tiers. And so we put all of our main books on the top and then put some of the smaller things on the underside. In fact, this fits perfectly in a rolly cart. So this sits on the bottom shelf of the rolly cart that we have. And so once again, just all of the resources that we're using for that term are available right there. So storage is definitely a, a big thing because you're going to find that you will need um, access to things and you don't want to be searching for it all the time. All right. And one of the final things for um, things that I really think that you need. Now I am going to share some things that I think are really great to have that may be extras, but things that we use regularly. But the other thing that I think you, you really should get is a good printer. Now we have the Epson EcoTank. Um, I saw a lot of other homeschoolers recommending that a couple years ago. We now have been using it for two years and I have only replaced the black ink once. I have actually never replaced any of the color ink in two years. So as a homeschooler, you will find that you will be printing a lot of things. So we, um, you know, print out different worksheets or whatever that we need, or I'm printing out our morning time menu uh, recitations and that type of thing. So investing in a good printer, one that is not going to cost you a lot of money to print out resources, I think is an invaluable thing that a, re or that a homeschooler needs for their homeschool. Now let's talk a couple of extra things that I think are fantastic to have that I actually use in our homeschool, but that maybe aren't totally necessary. So one of them is going to be wall maps. So as Charlotte Mason homeschoolers, we do a lot of geography every single week. And so every week we utilize the wall maps. You know, you can get a good atlas that you can um, really look at things, but being able to see you know, the world come alive in a big format just really brings it to life for the kids. Um, my, you know, my first grader right now is learning all of the continents and the oceans. And so having just something visible that she can walk up to and point out the continents and point out the oceans and just get a, a global understanding of what our world looks like, 
the maps have been invaluable. And then we also we have a world map, and then we also have a map of the United States. So whatever country you live in, it would be nice to have a big representation of that so that your child can become familiar with where they are at on that map. So we're from Michigan. So it's kind of fun because our state is shaped like a hand and we are surrounded by water. So you can actually see our state from a global map, which is kind of fun. So our kids have fun walking up to these maps and finding exactly where they are at on this world. And so giving them a, a place in our world and being able to identify where they are from is just a really neat thing for kids to experience because it kind of just gives them a place to put themselves in relation to other people. And so as we talk about other countries, and read about other countries and nationalities, we're then able to go to the map and be like, this is where that person is from. Like, isn't that neat that even though they are so far around the world, like we have these things in common. And so having maps, I think, has been a wonderful thing for our homeschool. Once again, it's not something that's necessary, but it's something that I have found to be a really good resource for our homeschool. Now, one more thing that I wanna talk to you about is a pro-click binding system. Once again, this is not something that I would say you absolutely have to have this. Um, this is just something that I have found invaluable. Some homeschoolers will tell you that you need a laminator. I have a laminator and I don't think I've hardly ever used it. I just don't take the time to do that. <laughs> um, so for me though, a ProClick binder is definitely one that I want to have um, available because what I do at the end of each term is my children go through and they give me oral narrations of what they have learned and I write them all down. And so over the years, I have compiled books of each school year so that we have a reference to look back at and it's just a beautiful representation of what they learned for that year. Um, the ProClick binder has given me the resource that I need in order to be able to do that. Um, you could use like maybe a three ring binder or something like that. Um, this way, I just, I like the way that it looks. It feels a little more professional and I'm hoping that it's something that they can look back on and be like, oh, I really like that. It's almost like a series of things now that they have been saving. So the ProClick binder is really simple. You actually would just put paper in here and you slide it and it creates holes in there. There's one little tip that I want to give you because if you look at the ProClick binding like um, spines, they aren't really cheap um, and, and they're, they're really cool because they do open up and you can add more pages and whatnot. But I really love getting the spiral binding um, and you can use this with a ProClick binder. You just have to make sure that you're getting the right pitch. So if you get a 3-1 pitch for um, the binding system, it works perfect with the ProClick binder. So that's just kind of a little, a little pro note there is that you can use spiral binding with a ProClick um, system by simply getting a 3-pitch binding when you purchase the, um, purchase the spiral binding. I do like to get the clear plastic covers as well as like a nice black back, just so that it looks professional. Are those necessary? No, I've even seen people, they'll um, they'll take cardstock and just, you know, run it through the ProClick binder and then you have a nice back if you just use a nice cardstock. Um, so there are a lot of different things that you can do with that. That is just a resource that I have found very helpful um, in our homeschool. Once again, like I said, it's probably not something that's necessary, but it is something that I use regularly. So this was just a really short video just to show you what I actually use in my homeschool for resources. Once again, like I said, I don't use a whole lot of resources. Pretty much what I've shown you apart from the curriculum and books is what we use. There's not a whole lot extra that I recommend having for your homeschool. I'm you know, I wouldn't call myself a minim minimalist at all, but things can make me feel a little bit like overwhelmed if I'm trying to gather up all of these manipulatives and just different resources. So I like to pare it down to what do I actually need? And so I hope that this was helpful to you because these are things that I have found helpful in our homeschool. And I hope that it can help you make better decisions um, for your homeschooling for the upcoming school year. And definitely let me know if you have any resources that you have found invaluable by by commenting below and just um, let other homeschoolers know things that you have, um, you know, have found helpful in your homeschool. Or if you want to know any more about any of these resources, um, I can also make other videos that maybe show a little bit more closely what these things are. But uh, definitely, um, if you found this, oh, if you found this uh, video.
If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel as I hope to share a lot more homeschool resources and curriculum reviews with you. But until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.